Hello, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I am Honey Toes. <laughs> this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. This is part four of our five-part spooky, spectacular Halloween oh, yes. October edition, all horror theme month films. So thank you for joining us once again. This and has been such a fun month. It has. I mean, I think The Strangers was kind of our... our uh, outlier but it was still a pretty yeah. still a fun episode i fell asleep <laughs> so if you can uh read the title you can already tell by today's title that <laughs> we're gonna have some fun today's episode is none other than 2012's the cabin in the woods directed by drew goddard and written by himself and joss whedon who you know from all the marvel movies pretty yeah. much so you want to talk about anything up front Mally, before we get into today's episode um this was a fun one. God, this was so much fun. I watched this with a group of kids who had never seen it before. And that was one of the most entertaining things I've ever done. It's an interesting experience the first time you see this movie. Because I remember my first time. I came home from work and my, my roommate at the time was just like, dude, you have to sit down and watch this movie. Because he had just seen it. Right. And I was like, well, what is it? He goes, it's called The Cabin in the Woods. It's a horror movie, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, that sounds you know like every other movie. He's like, no, no, trust me. You've got to watch it. Didn't tell me anything else other than that. So I did sit down and start watching it. And the whole time I was like, what the fuck is happening? You know? <laughs> and and by the time it got to, well, we're going to get there. But by the, time the, by the time it got to the part with the little Japanese girls yep. sitting, sitting around yep. singing and they turn them into a, a little goes into a frog uh-huh. i flipped our coffee table over i was like i'm <laughs> done with this fucking movie and he was like trust me you gotta sit through all the way through the end of it and yeah See, it, i went into this movie so cold like i was like horror movie yeah i never Drew heard goddard of i'm in mm-hmm. let's do this because mm-hmm. I, I i loved cloverfield oh same and yeah like 20 seconds in like there's I made it to the title card, and I was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> and the title card is... A, Amazing. Yeah, it's a jump scare in and of itself. Yeah. Like, it's pretty uh, pretty great. All right, so... Who's... The cast in this movie is insane. Yeah. Hemsworth. hmm Now, this was pre-Avengers. Techni- it was filmed pre-Avengers. It was also filmed pre-Thor. Yeah. So, you got that going for it, too. Um, Richard motherfucking Jenkins, mm-hmm. who I would watch... Make Anything. a sandwich for two hours. Yeah, he's great in everything. Um, Bradley Whitford. Now that's the other guy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. He was in what's Adam Sandler uh, goes back to school. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Yeah. He will forever be the dude from Billy Madison. Yeah, for real. And then a bunch of people I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's fine. I mean, the cast is pretty great all together. They play well off each other. So, um. Let's talk about the movie itself. It, like I said, came out in 2012. We've already established Drew Goddard. I'll go down. I'll go down the cast list. Chris Hem, Chris Hemsworth, Richard Jenkins, Bradley Whitford, Kristen Connolly, Anna Hutchinson, Frank Fran Kranz, and Jesse Williams. Now I'm assuming those last four are the f- are the, the pe- four teenagers. Yeah. Okay. I want to say Kristen Connolly is uh, the uh, Jules. Okay. And I think I can double check real quick, but I'm pretty sure she is. Uh, Anna Hutchinson, I guess, would be Dana. I know Fran Fran Kranz is uh the stoner character Marty oh, he, and Jesse Williams he kills it yeah dude he, he's he you would never know that he's not a real stoner like he actually did stoner classes to like get, really yeah I that was oh part of the God. trivia for this movie yeah uh Anna Hutchinson I'm sorry I had him backwards Kristen Connolly is Dana and okay. Anna Hutchinson is Jules wait so who's Jesse Williams uh Holden Oh, the the jock slash nerd. Okay, <laughs> which we'll get into that too. But yeah. uh, the movie this movie had a budget of thirty million dollars and managed to gross uh, double its earnings. It it grossed sixty six million worldwide. So, I mean, you could you could deem that a success. Yes, yeah. I know. I mean, it's supposed to be what three times, but still, yeah, it's still a, a for okay. Now this I want to talk about ninety two percent certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. That's got to be the highest we've ever done, right? It, it might be. Because we drift through the 60s and 70s a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what uh, Requiem for a Dream is, but it, it's up there. I think that was like an 89, wasn't it? It, it? You might be right. But yeah, it's a 92%. And that's that's the uh, critic score, too. The audience score is fairly high as well. Wow. Yeah. it's um The, the audience score itself is, well, if I can fucking, it's 73%. Okay. So that's Still pretty not high. bad. No, not at all. Uh, I think that's Especially how many people went and saw this movie, not realizing what it actually was. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, Requiem for a Dream was only 78%, but I had an audience score of 73. So okay. I guess they kind of flip-flopped. So it's both both are high up there. But yeah, 92% might be the highest one we've ever had. Well, talking about not knowing what this movie actually is, let's go and listen to that trailer. Yeah, because the trailer is bananas too. Yeah. GPS is unworthy of global positioning. That's the whole point. Get off the grid, right? Hello? I'm thinking this thing doesn't take credit cards. Sign says closed. We're looking for, uh, what's it called? Tillerman Road. Not to get you there. Getting back. That's your concern. <laughs> This is awesome. Whoa. No way. <laughs> the lambs have passed through the gate. They are come to the killing floor. Get this party started! Wait. I seriously believe something weird is going on. What is that thing? We have to stay together. This isn't right. We should split up. Yeah, good idea. Really? We gotta get out of here. Somebody sent those things here to get us. You're missing the point. They want to see us punished. So I think the trailer may give away a little too much. It okay, it does give away a lot, but it doesn't give you the act, like what well, it doesn't really like it shows a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but not what the movie actually is at yeah. all. I kind of feel like it's like when someone tells you before you see a movie, you know, it's got such a great twist ending, so the whole time you're trying to figure out what the twist yeah. is. I feel like I feel like that's what this trailer does cuz like they kind of show you a little bit of the of the uh the office building. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lab. Richard and then Jenkins it, pushing buttons. And then it tells you, you know, this is not your typical horror movie kind of thing. So I think it gives away a little bit, but yeah, definitely... Like they kind of hint at the... Like the thing where it's like, we should stick together. Oh, we should split up. Yeah. Like they kind of <laughs> hint at that. Yeah. <laughs> and they do, they do include one of my favorite lines in that trailer. Mm. We should split up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get into that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into the actual uh, movie itself? Let's get into this one, please. Okay. So, <clears throat> the movie starts off. Uh, we're in this laboratory, and we're having a conversation between uh, Hadley and I think the other guy's name is Citizen. 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 They're having just a conversation in the break room, whatever, and it's just. It's supposed to be ambiguous and intentionally confusing. I actually, uh, we'll get into that with the trivia. So, you know, they're just having a conversation. They're hopping on this little golf cart, going through this laboratory, and you have no idea what the movie. I love that they're driving a golf cart around. Yeah, yeah. And then, like in the middle of their conversation, you have the jump scare title. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Funny Games did, just yeah. like randomly out of oh, nowhere. Don't, don't let's not talk about Funny Games. <laughs> but yeah, it's just kind of out of nowhere, That's a and then episode in itself. You're like, am I watching the right movie? It did all of a sudden. We we uh, smash cut to. Uh, this the typical you know beginning of a horror road trip movie. All these well, characters. We do skip over another one of my favorite lines. There are so, this movie is so <laughs> infinitely quotable. It's like Smoke and Aces level quotable. Yeah, yeah. No, it has some great lines. Right there in the intro, you just got oh, you know, everyone knows you can't trust Swedes. Yeah, <laughs> I love where he says he's gonna uh, liberate his cabinets. Yeah, like, do you want to come over this weekend and help me liberate my cabinets? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> just jump scare title. It's pretty great. <laughs> 
so we we cut to the introduction of our, our characters. We we meet Dana, who is our lead character. She's kind of the introvert in the in the group. Mm-hmm. We meet Jules, who we find out through dialogue just she recently dyed her hair blonde. Yeah. So sure, uh, she's kind of your typical maybe cheerleader ish kind of popular girl, right. I guess. And they're just kind of having a conversation. We find out that through their conversation that Dana actually slept with her teacher, which when we get to the end of this movie, we have to come back to this because right. this is one of those foreshadowing elements that is not even foreshadowing. They straight up tell you yeah. right in the beginning. So keep your uh, put, put a pin in that one. We'll come back to that. So they're, they're having this conversation. They're getting ready to go on this road trip. And in comes uh, Joel's boyfriend, played by Chris Hemsworth. Uh, I don't remember his name. Okay, we'll just we'll just for, for, let's refer to him as Thor. So Thor about, comes in, and they're having a conversation about Soviet economic structures. Yes, yes, exactly. Then they kind of do like the whole PSA drug ad from the eighties. You know, yeah. I learned it from watching you, kind of thing about I, why I, I, that <laughs> that plays so well. Yeah, as they're talking about like why are you bringing these uh, these textbooks on this trip with us? Where'd you get <laughs> Who these? Who showed you this? Yeah, where'd you get this? I learned it from watching you. <laughs> Anyways, they're going kind of through the tropes of just like, oh, it's got this like indie rock music playing, and they're all happy, and it's sunny outside. Uh, there, we get introduced well, to. We have that nice little moment between Hemsworth, or sorry, Thor, and uh, what's the Dana? Dana. Which well, he doesn't like, have pants on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like, just, he's like, you know, you should read this. Blah 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 blah. And you have no pants. Yeah, and apparently we've gone through this whole scene, and she hasn't had pants on this yeah. whole time. Uh, they go outside. They they meet up with. I guess he's a recently transferred student. This guy is. This is Holden. And he's like the jock slash. He's a fucking nerd, which you don't really typically. Well, see. even like him and him, him and Thor both, because Thor is like dropping knowledge about like Soviet economic structure. Which this is kind of the whole point of this movie is like these characters don't fit your typical stereotypes, right? But they'll eventually align themselves with the tropes. Yeah, of, that kind of it plays into it. Yeah. We also get introduced to Marty, who is the, the stoner. Man. He is our. He is probably the audience's interaction. Like he speaks for the audience pretty much oh, the whole absolutely. movie. He's got this. Uh, like, what? I, well, I should also say we're cutting between this with clips from uh, the the laboratory, mm-hmm. where we're finding out. We still don't know necessarily what's going yeah, on. We have but no these, clue what's going these on. These lab laboratory. technicians are talking back and forth, and they're saying, oh, you know, we haven't had a glitch since 98, which I wonder... I'm trying to think what horror movie came out in 98 that maybe they could be referring to. Do you want to maybe look it up? Let me go and take, take a gander. All right, because I know that's got to mean something. It's got to mean something. We but. also get Marty's great <laughs> cop theory. Oh, I missed this part. What's oh, this? I love that. He's talking about oh, yes, whenever yeah, he yeah. pulls up with the huge bong. Yeah, that is a, you know just a straight up bong that we'll talk about that bong in a minute. But yeah, I, I remember what you're talking about. Go ahead. Um, But they're pretty much talking about... like His theory is pretty much <laughs> if a cop sees someone driving around with a huge bong, they're not going to pull him over <laughs> because he is more advanced than they are. Yeah, because he's like they, they fear a man. Oh, okay. Oh, Oh, we had some stuff come out in 98 was a good year. So what, what horror movies came out in 98? Um, let's see. We got Ring, which I'm not sure if th- this is That's the, the, the guy That's got to be the remake. Japanese one. The right, Ring let me go and go down this list for you. Okay. Apt Pupil. Okay. Bride of Chucky. Okay. Uh, Children of the Corn 5, Fields of Terror. All right. The faculty, motherfucking the faculty. Ooh, okay, uh, that might be one they're talking about. Then it's possible. Halloween H two O twenty years later. Ooh, actually, I don't know. Now that one might be. <laughs> I still know what you did last summer. Hmm. That one might be a good one too. Um, Gus Van Zant Psycho remake. Ooh. That was a glitch. That was a glitch. Okay, <laughs> it was the original. It was the original Japanese. Ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd put my money probably ooh, in an that. urban legend. Well, actually, I don't know. That one might be it, too. I don't know. But they're definitely making a reference to something. I just don't know what. I'd have to ask. Ask the uh, creators for sure. Anyways, so Marty gets out of his car. He's got this He's got this super huge, like, bong that is amazing because it's really, you know, Thor's like, you can't bring that on the on the uh, RV that we're taking and to this cabin. And while just casually walking away from the car, just... Voop, it's like a transformer. Voop. It turns into basically a, a thermos. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Amazing this, on every 
level. Yeah, this thing is awesome, and uh, this is actually we'll talk about that in the in the trivia section as well because that thing is awesome. Anyways, they're all loading up on this RV and they're heading out to I guess Thor's uncle's cabin and cousin. cousin, cousin, cousin. Okay, I'm sorry. And Marty is roll like during this whole scene. Marty's just sitting there casually, like this kind of back and forth talking scene. Marty's just sitting there casually rolling a joint. But if you look at the table, he has already rolled like 25. <laughs> that dude is looking to have a weekend. <laughs> For sure. And actually, I don't know if you noticed this, but there was like this uh, little line from Thor's, uh, from Chris Hemsworth's, where he mentioned something about being an Olympian god, which oh, I yeah. thought was kind of funny because, of course, Thor came out just like a few years. Very meta foreshadowing. Yeah, there. yeah. So anyways, they're going down this road. They're going way out into the woods. They make a comment that, you know, this place is off. The, the, the Even the GPS can't find it. Of it's, course. Of course. Yeah, it's off the grid. Uh, we They stop to get gas. And, of course, we have the cli- the cliche creepy gas station attendant. Like you've Mordecai. Seen in, like you've seen in a lot of horror movies. Absolutely. And he's just being a... He calls Jules a whore, which is great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I was watching this movie while reading the script as well. And it's almost beat for beat. Like, they stuck very really? close. Yeah. Huh. Like all the way down to him tossing the twenty dollars at the man's feet, and oh, I haven't read the script for this. Yeah, it's to. it's pretty much beat for beat. Like, I have a copy of it. I just haven't sat down and read yeah. it yet. Anyways, uh, as they're as they're going out, uh, oh, I, we should have mentioned too before they left uh, Dana's apartment, and loaded up on the RV. We see these people on the roof, like almost like uh, military type, that are that announce that you know the nest has been cleared, saying yeah. that all the people are gone, and they begin like a clean sweep, which I'm assuming that means they're like erasing any traces that they were there mm-hmm. possibly anyways they go to this gas station they get gas they go out the gas station tells them you know the gas station attendant tells them you got enough gas to get in getting out is a whole nother story yeah. pretty much kind of just giving you the beat by beat like don't go out into this fucking cabin yeah, like we've <laughs> all seen this story before right so they drive out and as they're driving they come to this really thin like it's in the mountains like this really thin tunnel yep along the mountainside and they're driving through it and as they're driving through it this big eagle enters frame, or maybe it's a hawk. But I think it enters, it's a hawk. I think it enters it's a frame, hawk. and it's flying through, and it's just, you know, we get, like, this beautiful establishing shot of the mountains. And all of a sudden, this eagle slams into this invisible matrix grid thing. It. Sparks are shooting out, and the, the, the hawk is just dead. Oh, yeah. Just falls Burnt immediately down into the ravine. Crisp. Yeah. So they, they pull up to this cabin, and it looks exactly like the cabin from Evil Dead. You know, it's got the heat, the, the, just it, it 100%. Like, like literally, it. it looks exactly like the Cabin from Evil Dead. And I gotta say, I was reading through the reviews of this movie uh, after uh, watching it again for like the fifth time, but someone made a good point. Why the fuck are they sleeping in this cabin when they have this motor home? <laughs> Why would you sleep in a motor home when you got a cabin? Because it's a motor home. It's got air conditioning. It's got Yeah, but uh, no, that's like the whole thing. Like, let's you know, kind of get out of our I, comfort zone. I get I, it. Dude, you tell me you would. If there was a cabin outside. I get it. Are you telling me we wouldn't be recording in that fucking cabin? No. <laughs> I'm an indoorsy person. I'm very... You're indoors in the cabin! Yeah, but are you really? I mean, you don't have central plumbing. You don't have air conditioning. It could be a modern cabin. People still live in cabins, Dustin. They have a Dustin. 19th century painting in here that doesn't reflect to me that there is okay, any you kind don't of like indoor art? plumbing. I mean, I like art. I don't like necessarily watching people like cut throats of goats and everything like this painting is anyways they go into this this cabin they're looking around and apparently one of us doesn't like to party <laughs> in holden's room he notices there's this, this creepy painting this 19th century style painting and yeah. he's like you know i can't look at this while we're while i'm in this the, room. yeah that painting is kind of fucked yeah so he takes it off the wall and he notices dana standing there looking at him and he's like what the fuck and he realizes real quickly that it's a one-way mirror yeah so he can see her she can't see him she thinks it's just a regular mirror on her side of the room so, as he's looking at her, he's kind of like observing her, like, oh, you know, kind of like falling for her kind of thing. Uh-huh. And she, as she starts undressing, he's like, I can't do this. So, he like knocks oh, on the oh, window. Oh, nope, nope, yeah. nope, 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 nope. He's like, I, I can't watch this girl get naked. So, he like knocks on the window and they, everyone comes in. They notice it. And uh, he offers to switch rooms with her, which I think is funny because they do switch rooms. And, and he then, just immediately starts undressing. He immediately starts trying to take his, his pants off. And so Dana's like, nope, nope. And she like covers it up with a blanket. Yeah. And as she's doing this, we kind of pull out and realize we're watching camera footage. Yeah. And we're back in the laboratory. So this cabin is rigged with cameras all over. And uh, I believe it's uh, S- uh, Sitterson. I keep wanting yeah, to say yeah. Sister Son. Jenkins. Let's, let's, Jenkins. It's Richard Jenkins. Jenkins, Jenkins is Jenkins. like, you know, all right, all right, guys, we're live. Places, yep. everyone. We're Here about we to go. get this party started. 
So I got a question too. They they make a comment with one of the there's this lab specialist yeah. Lynn. They make a comment with her saying, you know, oh, she you know she dyed her hair. It's not the chemicals aren't going to work on her as well. And again, at this point, you have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, like everything that's happening in the laboratory, you're just like, what the yeah, fuck? It's is almost happening? like you're watching two separate movies and completely you're missing out on the, the half of one, but. We find out that because Jules dyed her hair blonde, it's going to cause some kind of problem with something, which mm-hmm. I think is great because they they play into it. Because you know, typically you would have a, the the ditzy jockey, popular cheerleader right, character right. would be blonde, of course. But these characters aren't supposed to fit into the stereotype. But she just happened to have dyed her hair blonde, right? Which I think is is just fantastic. So as they're in the laboratory, they get a call from the gas station attendant, Mordecai, and this is. He's so, speaking. So he starts funny. speaking to to Hadley so cryptically. The lambs are being led yeah, to the slaughter. Exactly, and then as he's going on this deeper, deeper like speech, he <laughs> the the guys in the laboratory have a bought speakerphone and they're just laughing at him because he's acting so crazy or ridiculous or making fun of him. And as he and Mordecai gets deeper to the speech, he, he just stops. And all of a sudden, he's just like, "Wait a minute, I'm on speakerphone." <laughs> And they just start, you know, giggling to themselves. Like, no, no, of course not. He's like, no, I can hear the echo. Take me off yeah. speakerphone. And so Hadley pretends to and then just doesn't. And they, they get the joke twice because he goes back into this deeper, cryptic kind of conversation. And he's like, the rivers will run red with their bl- I'm still on speakerphone, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> and they start laughing like little fucking schoolgirls. Like, it's- it plays really fucking well. Um, then we smash cut to the lake. In front of the cabin, and Dana and Holden are in there swimming. Yep. And Thor does the dick thing that I hate when people I do love, this. I, I hate it's it. It's so funny. They though. do it in a funny way, but yeah, he's like, like, oh my god, what's that out in the? What? Oh my god, what is that? Is that my? It's my girlfriend. And then shoves her in. The yeah, water. it shoves Jules in the water, which he's being a dick. But at this point, they're again, they're starting to fall he's into being these a dick tropes. in a cute way. Too. Yeah, he's. But I, I hate when people. Push me into pools and shit. Well, don't date Thor. And- well, good, well, you can't tell me what to do. So, Fair point. We we go then. Uh, it's a little bit later. They're in the cabin, and oh, well, I'm sorry. We cut to the laboratory, and we notice all these people start pl- all the like all these people in this lab. There's like a like bunch of hundreds of them are here now. Are making placing bets, and we don't know what they're placing bets on, but they're just placing bets. You know. Uh, maintenance is placing placing bets on this thing yes. and that great joke though. What's the uh, what's it's the joke? Like, <sighs> maintenance bets on that every year. Yeah, if yeah. they were smart, they wouldn't be in maintenance. Yep, yep. Which yep. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're making bets and everything, which uh, cuts with the people in the cabin playing truth or dare, which is also kind of a betting game, which yeah, I thought was kind of fun. So Marty is playing with with jules and says you know truth or dare jules says dare marty stands up and he points across the cabin he's like i dare you to make out with that moose and we everyone turns around to see what he's pointing at and it's a wall stuffing like of a wolf yeah (laughs) and they're like i don't think you've ever seen a a, a wolf before or a moose before (laughs) so there's this really odd scene where jules is seductively making out with this wolf this wolf's head on the wall and it's supposed to play like it might be a jump scare, but nothing happens. So, I, I'm I'm not doing this scene. I'm doing this scene disservice, but just go watch the movie. Right, right. We'll see what I'm talking about. So, Dana, it's her turn to pick Truth or Dare. And Thor kind of comes in and she just says, it's truth. She's like, well, what's that supposed to mean? He's like, look, we all know, you know, Jules will say dare. You'll get scared or whatever it is. And you'll just go with truth, which is, you know, breaking the rules and everything. So, as soon as she, she calls him on it, she says, dare. The cellar door that's on the floor just rips open and <laughs> like flies open with force. And I can't remember who says it, but someone says maybe it's the wind. <laughs> but it's Thor. Oh, Thor's like, yeah, maybe the wind did it. They're like, <laughs> Marty's just like, in what world does that make yeah. sense? <laughs> Again, Marty, voice of the audience. Absolutely. So they go downstairs into the cellar and there, there's just, it's a, a, a museum of creepy artifacts. There's like, Something similar to the cube from uh, Hellraiser, and there's like this little, uh, what do they call the little music box with the spinning ballerina, and everyone's just kind of playing with them, and then uh, Dana happens to come across this book, which, I'm again, this is all kind of going back to Evil Dead. She finds this book, and when you know it, it's got some Latin inscription in it. Of uh, fucking course it is. So, she's reading <clears throat> the, the little English paragraph before that says, you know, do not read this. 
do not read this Latin part out loud. And it's, she says that. You hear this voice whisper, read it. Read it out loud. And Marty's <laughs> the only one who hears it. He's like, did you guys hear that? So she does. She starts reading this book in Latin. And as we as she's reading it, we get a cut of the forest that surrounds the, the, uh, the, the cabin. And wouldn't you know it, a hand pops out of the ground. And we cut back to... To uh, the <laughs> laboratory where some people are celebrating. We're like, all right, everybody, it's the Buckners. And they started clapping and cheering. Some people are uh-huh. pissed off. And it turns out that maintenance was the better the right the right this time on the Buckners. And Ronald the intern. <laughs> yes. Way to, way to go, Ronnie. <laughs> way to go, Ronald. So we get this shot of Citizen sitting in front of this whiteboard. Do we uh, want to talk about the whiteboard yes. now? No, no. Okay, let's, let's talk go ahead and now. talk about it. <clears throat> so this, this is... A list of of monsters and beasts, uh, and on it, we also see who what department yeah. bed on this. Let me this let me go ahead and run through this. Okay, I'll do it quickly. Well, let me, let, oh hold on, do you have? I have actually the order. We can go straight top to bottom. Uh, oh yeah, I wait. Did you? We got the same no, thing. It's the same up one, right but now. I have it's it's out of order on that list. Oh, so the okay. first thing is werewolf, which everybody knows a werewolf, and yeah, it turns out the finance department bid on them. Yep. Second is. Alien beast bit on by the biomed team. Yep. So we can assume that's probably like a face hugger or something from yeah, which, the alien. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Next, we have mutants from the demolition team. Beautiful. Uh, I don't know if there's any reference to that necessarily. Then we go down. We have wraiths that nobody's bit on. Uh, zombies by the chem department. Chem department. Yep. Reptilius, which... Uh- Maybe that's kind of like that a, is. Is that maybe like a Godzilla reference? Probably. Okay. Uh, then next we have clowns bid on by the electric department, which I'm guessing is a nod to Pennywise. Oh, yeah. It has to be. Especially because uh, you see the clown later and it looks just like Pennywise. <laughs> yeah. Then we have witches. <coughs> witches was bid on by operations. <coughs> but then we also have sexy witches. Those are very different. <laughs> bid on what, what I'm assuming is the architect department. We have demons. Nobody's bid on them. We have Hell Lord, bid on by Citizen himself. Nice. So what do you think Hell Lord is? Is that the Cenobite type thing or no? No, I don't think so. Maybe oh, I it was. Maybe no. I think that comes up later on, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, then we have Angry Molesting Tree. Okay, which according to my list, Hell Lord is. Is the, the Cenobite? Okay, yeah. which so, obviously Hellraiser. Reference. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about Hellraiser there. But yeah, then we have. Uh, uh, the angry molesting tree, which obviously that's an evil that's dead. That's evil thing. dead. So the, let's go back out because we're actually seeing some. The mutants we could say is probably from like the hills have eyes or yeah, wrong yeah. turn or something like that, like the cannibalistic kind of kind of thing that's going on there. Reptilius, yeah, it is a reference to like a miniature Godzilla, basically. Okay. Clowns, Pennywise, yeah. obviously. So let's. See. I'm just, I just want right. to make sure I'm not missing anything here. So we're at giant snake now. Yes. So, which I mean, it's a giant snake. It yeah, is. maybe we could say. I don't think Anaconda had come out at this point, but you know, we, it also looks like the giant snake from like the Resident Evil Two video game. So, uh, then next we have Deadites, which that's straight up Evil Dead. Uh, the, oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Then the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. The giant snake was bit on by internal, maybe internal, the internal department. I don't know. I can't really see because Henderson's kind of blocking yeah. it from this picture. Uh, Dead Eyes looks like it was it was bit on by the story department. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, then we have it, it, it. Let's come back to this one because this one's the yeah, most. Let's interesting save that one. one for last because that's always a topic of conversation yeah. with anyone that watches this movie. Then we next we have Mummy that's bit on by the psych department, which of course that's you know obviously from the Mummy. Then next we have the Bride bit on by what looks like uh, digital analysis. Maybe is that mm-hmm. department? So, of course, that could be Bride of Chucky, Bride of Frankenstein, maybe Reanimator. You know, t- take your pick. Then we have the Scarecrow Folk, bit on by Data Archives. Data Archives. Do you know who that could be? Is that maybe Children of the Corn? Uh, that's what I always took it as, but, I mean, no confirmation on that one. Okay, then we have uh, Snowman. <laughs> Jack Frost. Jack Frost, clearly. Uh, they're saying the scarecrow could be from Batman Scarecrow. It could be the town that dreaded sundown. Oh, okay. All right. Next, uh, Snowman was bid on by communications, by the way. Then we have <laughs> Dragon Bat. <laughs> so, um, 
it looks like something from like the Harry Potter universe. No, it looks just like a dragon from Harry Potter, only with a little bit of a bat feature to it. Yeah. Next, we have uh, vampires, which which distribution was, went for. Nice. Yep. We have dismemberment goblins. <laughs> So you could say that's probably from Gremlins or or <coughs> Creep. We have the Sugar Plum Fairy. Nobody's bit on. Them. Then we have an interesting one. I should mention that after the Buckners are picked as the ones that are going to be, you know, that have been chosen by these Hadley kids. Is pissed. Hadley's pissed because he mentions he's never going to get to see a merman, and the yeah. merman is the next on the board. And you could say that's probably something from like Creature of the Black Ragoon, uh, oh, yeah. Lagoon or something. Then next you have the reanimated. Reanimated. That you could administration went for. It's a bold move. That you could always say it's from like reanimator pretty Obviously. much straight up. The next one's interesting. It's just straight up unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> from the engineering, engineering went department. For it. I mean, traditionally, like unicorns mm-hmm. weren't like, you know, they were terrifying creatures back like when they first started popping up. Yeah. The next one is interesting too. The Huron. Which well, is basic? What is that? That's basically like vengeful Native Americans. <laughs> like, oh my god! Last of the Mohicans. R and D. R and D went for okay. them. Okay. Next, we got Sasquatch slash Vendigo Wind- slash Yeti. Yeah, no what? one went for it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's obviously you know it could be Bigfoot or whatever you want to call it. Uh, next, we have the dolls, which I'm assuming is a reference to the Strangers. Because I don't really recognize anything else it could be from. Yeah. Then we have next uh, the doctors, who could be from you know, the the Jacob's ladder maybe or yeah, something. Yeah, Jacob's ladder would make sense. And then we have our win winners, our winners the Buckners, the zombie redneck, redneck zombie torture, redneck torture family, torture family. <laughs> maintenance, and Ronald the intern. Mm-hmm. Then we have Jack O' Lantern, which is that like kind of like a trick or treat? You think trick or treat? Like could even be a nod to like Halloween 3 with the uh, okay. mask. Then we're getting down to the last few. We have Giant, <laughs> which, you know, whatever you want to call yeah. that one. And then we have Twins. Which, oh, I guess the Twins. Twins from The, from the Shining, Shining yeah. I guess. Yeah. So all in all, I mean, some really solid pools there. Yeah. Pretty um, pretty good like references yeah, to anyone other could have taken it. Yeah. So let's go back to the final one we skipped over. This one is the most talked about probably thing in this movie. It literally just says on this whiteboard, Kevin. Kevin. So, we obviously have speculations about what that could necessarily be, but we're going to talk about that in the trivia section. Okay. Because there's some theories about what exactly Kevin could be uh, that Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard kind of confirmed anyway. So, again, we get the comment, you know, Hadley, I'm never going to get to see a merman. Poor guy. We get a cut to some different... Um, locations across the world. One of them being Japan. Yeah. Again, we have no idea what the hell is happening here. But in Japan, we see these little schoolgirls in this classroom trying to escape from like this ghostly looking thing that kind of looks like Samara from The Ring. Maybe. Not kind of. It looks just like Samara from yeah. The Ring. But again, we have no idea why we're seeing this footage. Okay. I watched this with one of my friends who happens to be from Japan and she got so excited during this part. Really? Yeah. Was it just like, uh, oh, that's cool, like kind of thing? Yeah. Or like, okay. But it was so, really but funny. She still had no idea what was going on, right? Clueless. All right. So. <clears throat> she we, wasn't paying attention to the movie up until that point. Okay. So we come back to the, ca- the guys in the cabin, and they're back on, in the uh, back up from the cellar. And Jules is giving a lap dance to, I think, Holden? I believe so, yeah. For what? I mean, and, and Thor is just at the back pouring drinks, like, dancing, like, yeah! Like, just... <laughs> Let's <laughs> go! It's, like, totally cool with her, his girlfriend giving another dude a lap dance. And then we find out through dialogue that Marty and her had kind of a thing, maybe, her right. and Jules, like... And she starts to give him a lap dance as well, which, again, I'm like, I don't... Thor is, like, totally into it. And this is where your characters are starting to kind of fall into the tropes even more... Of the road trip horror movie kind of thing. So we find out that they've been kind of pumping chemicals through this cabin to yeah. like alter these kids like uh, brain mechanics like their just their psychology in general. Because that's where Marty starts to like point out. He's like, why is everyone acting so weird? Yeah. So Jules. He says, he says something like to Thor or about Thor. He's like, you know, he's not usually this alpha male yeah bullshit he's, he's, he's a sociology really cool. major yeah 
Uh, so Jules and, and Thor head out into the woods because they're drunk and they're making out or whatever. Yep. Uh, I don't know where exactly Holden goes, but Dana and Marty start talking. He's like, you know, Marty makes a comment. I think there's like somebody influencing us to do stuff like yeah. like puppeteers. And, you know, Dana kind of brushes it off. Anyways, we cut to Jules and Thor in the woods. And it's pretty great because they're walking through the woods and Thor is obviously wanting to, to have sex. Of course. And uh, Jules is kind of like, eh, I don't know. And they start, the lab, we cut to the lab and they start pumping pheromones yep. out of little like like uh dispensers out in the woods and we see like this purple smoke kind of like coming up and also you know they're they're as she, they're not noticing this they're making out whatever and she's like he's like come on let's do it in the woods she's like i don't know he's like it could be romantic and as soon as he say that we cut back to citizen who turns a dial <laughs> and then in the woods there's like this beautiful light that just beams in like almost like a spotlight to where they could have sex <laughs> and so they do they lay down they start having sex whatever <coughs> and it's pretty great because we what we forgot to, to mention is that another character who apparently it's like his first day on the job, uh, Truman. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Truman is watching this, and he's not betting at all. He's not interested in any of this. He's kind of sickened, honestly, about what's going on. And again, we don't know what he knows, but we're about to find out pretty soon. So as Hadley and Titterson are watching the monitors, watching these two like try to get it on, Hadley's making this comedy. He's like, come on, baby, let's see some boobies. And Truman's like, you know, do you really get enjoyment out of this? And they're like, look, it's it's not up to us. We have to play by the rules or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we do get to see Jules topless. Of course. And <laughs> Well, then we get Hadley's great line when he's telling all the other people to get out of the room. Yeah. It's like, your basic human needs disgust me. Yeah. <laughs> so as they're, they're, you know, fooling around ever, Jules gets stabbed in the hand with, like, a scythe or something. Yep. And it's this big redneck zombie thing, like with long hair, just crawled out of the swamp. One of the Buckners. And she tries to run away. And uh, she, <laughs> then we get the coolest weapon ever, which is basically just a bear trap on a chain. Yep. So as Jules is trying to run away, talk about redneck initiative. Yeah. She gets hit in the back with this bear trap and the Buckner drags her back. And in front of Thor, they slit her throat with this big scythe. So she's the first to go. So as as Jules uh, is dead, we cut to Hadley pulling a switch, and as he does, there's this like blood like fluid dripping down like this monolith, and on this monolith, there's like the shape of like a silhouette of a character of a woman character like expo- exposing herself yeah. kind of thing. Again, no fucking clue what's happening. <laughs> we cut back to Marty sitting in the cabin by himself. And he's just kind of thinking out loud or whatever. And all of a sudden we hear this voice, <laughs> the same voice whisper just saying, Go for a walk. <laughs> he's like freaking out. He's like, look, I know I'm not the only one hearing this. I don't want to go for a walk. You know, who's out there basically like freaking out like a stoner, like yeah. almost conspiracy theorist kind of would. And the voice again just goes, Go for a walk. And he's like, I don't want, I, I can fucking hear you. Who the fuck is that? And he's like, I'm going to go for a walk. Yeah. And immediately walks <laughs> outside. So he goes well, out uh, not before doing that weird fucking puppet dance. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I'm just a little puppet here. You know, I'm a little puppet. That. Uh, we cut to Dana and Holden kind of making out in a room, whatever, just talking back and forth, whatever. This yeah. seems kind of unimportant. We cut back. Well, to- except for the, he's got a husband bulge. Oh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Marty just killing it in this picture. So Marty's outside, and as he's standing there, we had a jump scare of just like Thor, for, like coming out of the woods, covered in blood, covered in like, blood. Oh, he's God. like, "Come on, we gotta get inside." They go inside, and <laughs> well, you know, not before the little zombie girl pops up, and Thor just fucking clotheslines oh, yeah. her. <laughs> just knocks her straight the fuck just down. Just knocks her the fuck out so they get inside it's marty dana holden and uh thor and you know thor's like come on we got it we can escape out the back whatever and as he's going to escape something like some kind of chemical gets pumped out of the vents and instantly thor just kind of stops and he's like wait a minute we should split up so implying that this chemical is kind of fucked with him in his head and it's funny he's like we should split up we're gonna cover more ground that way and marty's just like really <laughs> like yeah. like again the voice of the audience yep and as soon as he does, you know, one of the Buckners tries to break through the door. They kind of all kind of split up. Uh, Marty locks himself in this bedroom and he finds a tiny, tiny little camera. Yeah, because he knocks the lamp over. Yeah, and he, he thinks he's in a reality TV show. So as he's doing that, uh, one of the Buckners drags him out of the window 
and Marty is killed off screen. Mm-hmm. So Marty's Sad. the second one to go. This gets interesting because as we saw with Jules uh, and Hadley pulling the switch to fill the blood monolith for her, as he does it for for Marty, implying that Marty, which when we see the monolith, it's kind of like the fool, like, like a jester. Like a jester type. Of yeah. Guy, yeah. As that happens, the the laboratory kind of shakes like a tremor. Yeah. Which we'll come back to that, but that's important. And this point, you, you yeah, don't Hadley's think... Hadley's just kind of like, oh, they're getting excited. Yeah, you don't know what the fuck is happening. And again, this is where I flip the table over because we get a cut to <laughs> Japan again and we see all these little schoolgirls in a circle kind of holding hands in a ring singing and in the middle is the Samara character who's apparently being killed by the singing and she turns into a frog. Yep. And one of the little girls picks up the frog and in Japanese is basically saying... Now, Kyoto can never harm us again because she is this lovable little frog. And it's so great because as we're seeing this, we cut back to Citizen in the laboratory looking at the monitor, watching this. And he just starts screaming at the monitor, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, to all these little girls. And so we find out that across the land, there are situations of people being attacked by monsters but defeating them. Like this ritual is yeah. worldwide. So I want to say there's like cities. Argentina. Maybe there was like a King Kong looking thing. Yeah, there was beaten. a King Kong there. I think in Russia, it almost looked like a nuclear disaster. Yeah. Um, Probably yeah, Chernobyl or something. Yeah, there's stuff all over the So again, we planet. have no idea what's going on. But uh, the the uh, Citizen and Hadley start freaking out because they're realizing that Holden, Dana, uh, Holden and Dana... Are are in the RV, as along with Thor, and they're trying well, to escape. Before that, they do say like it's just it's down to them and Japan. Yeah, right. And so that's why he gets so pissed off about Japan. Yeah, I, guess, I should have mentioned it. Yeah, apparently all the other scenarios failed, yeah. and now it was Japan and America, and now Japan has failed. Which Japan apparently had a perfect track record up until this point. Yeah. So it's down to USA to make sure the scenario works out. And again. <laughs> Again, it's still very confusing what the hell is happening yeah, here. Yeah, still fucking clueless. So, the Thor, Holden, and Dana are driving, and they're trying to escape, and they go back to this tunnel, and that's when Citizen and Hadley are freaking out, because they're realizing the tunnel should have been blown, blown up. Yeah. And so they race down to the demolition department, and Citizen's under the desk, trying to wire things together to get this tunnel to blow. And it does, the tunnel blows at the last minute. And Thor and Holden and Dana get out. And they're like, you got to be fucking kidding me. You know, this is ridiculous. They're, they're stuck, basically. However, uh, because this tunnel in the middle, there's like this ravine. There is a, a a part of like a cliff on the other side that it's probably only like 20 feet away yeah. that they could reach. And so Holden makes a comment. It's like, well, you can't jump it. Smash cut to Thor on a motorcycle about to yep. jump this ravine. So he's like... Holden's like, can you make it? And Thor's like, I've jumped bigger ravines than this before. And like this, this like superhero music starts building up, and he starts giving this speech like, I'm gonna go back for help, and I'm gonna come back with helicopters big and big guns and everything. So this leads to my favorite death. <laughs> so oh yeah, it's this superhero's this moment. Is so epic. Kurt, you know, revs up the bike and he jumps over the ravine, and as he's midair, we get a shot of him with like his coat flapping in the wind, like Evil can evil, like jumping this ravine, only to smash into this invisible matrix grid. You know, his sparks are shooting out, and as he's falling straight down into the crevi- the crevice in the ravine, and just just sparks are flying up, and he's dead as fuck. And then you know, Holden and Dan are screaming, freaking out, and they're like, you know. What the hell? He didn't hit anything. What the fuck? So they get back in the RV and they start racing back to the cabin. So we uh, cut back in to the laboratory where they start talking about the deaths of these characters. Yeah. And they mention that, you know, it's got to happen in order. It's got to be the whore, then the fool, then the, you know, so on, so on. And they, they say that the virgin's death is optional. So at this point, the only last two characters remaining are Holden and Dana. Yep. So we're not really necessarily sure exactly who, quote unquote, the Virgin is, but we kind of have our speculations. And it's so great because as uh, you know, they're driving down the road. Holden's like, you know, you guys, you guys, stay calm. Talking to Dana, we're gonna get out of this. And as soon as he does say that, he gets a scythe through the neck. <laughs> oh, um, one of the Buckners is in the RV, which is great because that means he's been hiding there this whole time. Yep. <laughs> and Holden is dead as fuck. They crash into a lake. Uh, 
the Buckner, because it's a zombie, doesn't need to breathe. Of course. Is able to, you know, swim to the top. Dana swims to the top. She thinks she's, you know, escaped. But the one of the Buckners, again, attacks her. So as he's attacking her, every, she, we're assuming she's dead. After this point, everyone is dead. So we cut back into the office, and there's like this epic party music oh, playing, and everyone's popping bottles. Everyone's drinking, celebrating. It looks like a hell of a good time. Because they're like, we did it. We, you know, the scenario's over. The virgin died, everything. We're good. So everyone's celebrating. And it's pretty great because you get random bits of conversations. Yeah. Like, this guy's hitting on this, like, beautiful lab technician. <laughs> and she just kind of walks away from him as he's, like, trying to, like, talk to her. But, anyways, they're talking back and forth, and Hadley's, like, Mentioning to a bunch of group of people, it's like, you know, it still would have been cooler if, with a merman. Oh, absolutely, it would have. <laughs> so, uh, Sanderson's like talking to Demolition team. He's like, you guys scared me, you know, with that tunnel not being blown up. That was very close. They're like, look, it wasn't our fault. And they're not partying at all. They're very serious. They're like, yeah. look, you know, it wasn't us. There was an unauthorized power surge that was rerouted from upstairs. Uh-oh. And so they're like, eh, it doesn't matter. You know, we still got it done. And as it's happening, there's this big red phone on the wall that starts ringing. And that, it's kind of like when that phone rings, everyone shuts the fuck up. Yeah, real fucking quick. They kill the music and everything. And Hadley answers the phone. We don't hear who he's talking to, but they're like, you know, no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not arguing with you, whatever. And he's like, who's still alive? And they, they look back on the monitor and they realize that uh, Marty is not dead. Because Marty yep. comes in. Saves the motherfucking day. Saves the day with his bong thermos. Yep. Knocks out one of the Buckners. Her, him, and Dana start escaping through the woods, and Marty takes her to this this uh like the grave this that grave. the Buckners came out the of. grave that the Buckners came out. It turns out that it's got an elevator in it, so he takes Dana oh. inside. What's and, up? And then we get his line because she steps over the th- the Buckner you thought killed Marty is laying there in mm-hmm. a pile of goop and bits. Yeah, and she's just like, "Oh my god!" And he's just, "Yeah, I had to dismember that guy." What have you been up to? Yeah, what have you been up to? <laughs> so they get in this elevator, right? And it's pretty great because one of the, like, I guess the Butner's arms tries to attack him. Like, yeah. And, <laughs> like, tries to attack. The elevator closes and, like, the little, the arm is still, like, trying to choke uh, Marty. So he, like, throws it off and he's like, fucking zombie arm. <laughs> Anyways, the elevator starts going down, right? And they have, they can't see. on both, <coughs> Basically, on both, two sides of the elevator it's are just glass black. planes. Uh, glass panes and there's just infinite black void on both mm-hmm. sides and so they can't see anything they're going down and all of a sudden it stops and now they start going sideways and as they do they come to a stop again and they're kind of looking out into this black void and nothing's happening all of a sudden a werewolf just leaps at the glass out of nowhere, out of nowhere and it's trying to attack them but it really you realize real quickly that he is in an elevator as well the werewolf is yeah and so the elevator starts shifting again sideways and this time there's a ghost that tries to attack him. And then there's this creepy little ballerina girl. With just teeth for a face. Just a big bunch of circles of teeth for a it's face. It's kind of like she has the Sarlacc pit from Star yes. Wars on her face. On her face. And then we end on one that's a Xenobite, basically. Yep. And he's got razor blades in his head, whatever. And he's not talking or anything. He's got this little box. Yeah, and and that's, Dana, where, that's where Dana realizes that she's mm-hmm. like, oh, we chose, like, whenever they're in the cellar, I had all those trinkets, like, whichever one they touch. Basically, like, they're one. saying whatever object they touch, that was going to, what was going to be picked yeah. to kill them off, one by one. And so the Butners were picked because she read from the book. Yeah. Which I wonder what you have to pick to get a merman. Mm, good point. I don't know. Researching. Um. Anyways, we find out that because Marty has been smoking an ungodly amount of weed this whole time. That research is really easy. It was the conch shell. Oh, well, that makes sense. All right. So, yeah, because Marty's been smoking this ungodly amount of weed this whole time, it's been basically immunizing him to everything that the, like, the uh, gases and everything that keep yeah. pumping into the house. It's been So he's like, again, his fault as a character is the, the, the what saves the day. Yeah. <laughs> so as Marty and Dana reach the end of the elevator ride basically they come out and there's just a guy like a SWAT team member putting a gun at their face tell them to get out the office I mean get out of the elevator but just just Marty he's just they just want Marty and so the zombie arm that attacked Marty originally starts attacking uh the guard they knock the guard out whatever and they 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 basically start walking through this this these uh this laboratory like the the hallways the corridors and as they're talking this voice comes over the intercom basically saying you know, we know you're scared. We know, you know, 
we we had to do this we had to kill everyone so you know just be you don't realize what you're doing you know your deaths will save countless others blah 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 and they come to this hallway that's just a hallway of elevators on both sides and as they they hear like more SWAT team members basically coming around the corner so they hide in this room and there's a big shootout the people yeah, of just the SWAT team just shooting at this little window shooting at this little room that they're in and Dana realizes there's like a purge button inside a big red button so she's like you know I think I have an idea because as they were going down the elevator ride we get like this full scope view of all these different elevators yeah. with just different kind of there's even like a boomer from the Left 4 Dead game in there oh there's a there's there's too many references to name. We yeah, there's it's a, this whole movie is just reference porn, basically. So she she knocks the purge button. All of a sudden, we hear the elevators dinging, and out of these elevators come every unimaginable fucking monster you can like fathom. Like mm-hmm. it's just immediate death. There's the dragon bat. There's the giant snake. There's even robots with like buzz saws attached to them that are killing people. This this hallway is just covered from floor to to toe. I mean, I head to toe with blood. Just oh yeah, just instantly mass chaos. So all these monsters start running throughout the labs and killing everyone they can. We get a unicorn impaling some dude on a wall. We get I love the unicorn death. We get a clown that's like impervious to bullets stabbing people. We get the robot with the buzzsaw going downstairs and cutting people. Basically, it's just absolutely mad chaos. And so everyone starts dying. Even Truman gets attacked by, like, scarecrow people with knives. Yeah, he eyes. gets ripped apart by the scarecrow people. And it's pretty great because he decides he's going to go out pulling a grenade and killing them all and himself. Most baller death of all time. And as he does that, it knocks Hadley across the room. And, and throughout the smoke and debris of this... As Hadley's laying there, just like, Ugh. He's barely able to get up. He sees something coming through the smoke. And what is it but... A fucking merman and it's pretty great because as he realizes it's a merman he's like oh come on only to have his face bitten off by this merman <laughs> and like the merman has a blowhole on his back and it's just like, it just starts gushing blood, blood. like because let's be honest we were all curious like what the fuck does a merman yeah. look like and basically it's like the- it is fucked up looking. <laughs> oh my god so just google cabin in the woods merman, merman yeah it's pretty great so basically, Although you should probably have seen the movie. By yeah, now, yeah. Guys. So Citizen manages to make an escape into uh, of this vault on the floor. Yeah, and he tries to take the woman Lynn with him, but she gets ripped up by this giant tentacle. Uh-huh. We don't even see what it's attached to. And Dana and Marty are going through this building, you know, and they manage to evade all the people, all the monsters that are attacking them. <coughs> and as Citizen gets down into this like bunker, he starts running, and Dana impels him with a knife. Yep. And then Citizen's last word is like, look, you have to kill Marty. You know, just you have to do it. So Dana, you know, they leave them there and they run down to the bottom of this bunker. And basically what it is, it's like this, it's almost like a the bat cave. Like it's got this like little <laughs> cliff surrounded by monoliths and down yep. below is just a pit of blackness. Like you don't really yeah. get to see what it is. So, you know, Dana and, and Marty are looking around. They notice these monoliths. There's, you know, the one with the, the woman exposing herself. There's the fool. There's... The jock, uh, a virgin, and a scholar, the yeah, nerd, they basically. they realize. They realize all of them, Jules, Thor, Holden, Marty, and Dana, realize they each kind of fit into a stereotype of those those five monoliths. And so, and as they're then, talking, who enters but the director... Motherfucking Ripley. Sigourney Weaver. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> so she enters, and she's basically saying, telling exactly what the plot of the movie is. They're like, look... Which, let's be honest... Every time, like, when you first watch this movie, you're just like, holy fucking shit, it's Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of recognize her voice as a director on the intercom, but until you actually see her, it doesn't, like, register completely. So she starts basically telling you the part of the movie. The point is that every year or so, they have to do this ritual. Yeah, and it's annually. It's annually. This, the whole world has to do this ritual, and basically only one of them has to succeed, where they kill off these people in a specific order, and... They can only influence them to do things. They can't actually physically kill them right. themselves. They have to make the choices. So basically, that was the point of the the sellers. Like they had to pick how they were going to die, and then they had to die in a specific order. So the laboratories and the office people are able to manipulate them by like pumping the pheromones in or yeah. like blowing up the tunnel, but they can't directly kill these people. And they're like, you know, Dana's like, "Who are you doing this ritual for?" And Sigourney's like, basically saying. 
these ancient gods that used to roam the earth. And that's what we're assuming is at the bottom of this pit yeah, that we can't see. Because they kind of look down and you just see like... There's loud rumbling. Like fire and yeah. pretty much. There's like a loud rumbling and the whole time the fucking... This cave is shaking yeah. and everything. And they're like, look, you, eat, you Dana, have to kill Marty. Uh, otherwise... otherwise it's like eight minutes until... Until sunrise, sunrise before the rituals. To yeah. Like you completed. have to kill Marty or the literally the world will end. Yep. And Marty's like, you know, maybe that's what we need. Or, you know, she tells Marty, you can die with with the gods or you can die for them. Yeah. And Marty makes a good joke. He's like, well, gosh, they're both so enticing. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to ask you before we get to the end of this movie, what, what do you think? If you're in Marty's shoes, do you kill yourself or allow Dana to kill yourself? Or you just, I kind of like, like, fuck it. Let's go out with a bang, right? Yeah, I might as well. I mean, if I'm going to die... And this ritual is going to have to happen annually anyway, and people are going to have to die regardless. Yeah, it's like, I've always, no, I've always said, like, I don't want to die in a boring way. Like, I want to go out. You you would be the responsible for the, literally the end of humanity. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in a, in I mean, a masochistic, I mean, nihilist kind of way. a fucking legacy. <laughs> I mean, a legacy for no one, but still. It may be in the still, afterlife, but. Yeah. Dana's got got this, this. this gun. Uh, she takes uh, she took Citizen's gun and you know she's pointing it at Marty. She's like, "Look, Marty, I'm sorry, but if this has to happen. Then it's gonna happen." And as she's about to shoot him, a were- the werewolf comes down and starts attacking Dana. Yeah, starts f- fucking her up. Yeah, and so Marty gets the gun, kills the werewolf, and as Sigourney Weaver is about to kill Marty. This little girl with an axe, one of the it's monsters. The, it's the Buckner girl. Oh, it's the little Buckner girl. She's got an axe. She axes She's, her. She followed them all the way, like from the elevator. From the elevator, all the way down yeah. here. And she kills. She puts an axe in the back of Scorny Weaver's head. Yep. And for some reason, she just kind of walks off, <laughs> like leaves yeah, Dana. Just, and, all right, good to go. So Dana and Marty start kind of like cuddling up, and they're like, yeah. "We're sorry." And as this is yeah, going on, we get. Uh, Marty's line of, sorry I let you get attacked by a werewolf that yeah. ended the world. Yeah. <laughs> and so, literally, they're just kind of cuddled up as these explosions are happening. And all of a sudden... Hey, wait. He also lights a joint. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, he does light a joint. Because, of course, he yeah, rolled course like he 50 of them earlier. So, so uh, this is the end of the movie. As the, you know, they're kind of cuddled up in like this beautiful moment. Uh, oh, we also... Oh, we missed the part where... Sigourney makes a comment about Dana being the virgin role. Oh, yeah. And she's like, wait, what? And she goes, you know, we, we take what we can get. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> we work with what we can get. Yeah. So uh, this the the cave explodes, the lab explodes, and then we go we cut to the top of the cabin. And it's just the biggest fucking hand on the face of the planet bursts out of the ground. Like It's like a hundred foot long arm, just huge. a huge hand. And then we just... And it just... Smashes. Slaps the camera. Yeah, and that's and the end that's, of the movie. <laughs> that, yeah, that's it. So like, theoretically, end of the motherfucking world. Let's talk about this because we had the biggest end to a movie I think we've had in terms of things like this was Terminator Three last yeah. time, where most of civilization was wiped yeah. out. In this case, it's the end. Yeah, like, it's like basically like the Earth exploding. <laughs> like I wouldn't have been like I half expected that arm to burst out of the ground and just flip the camera off. <laughs> it's like Alderaan in A New Hope almost. Yes. Like the whole world is just done. <coughs> and then cut the black, roll the credits. That's it. Yeah, like it like this movie literally <laughs> ends with the end of the fucking world. So we got our work cut out for us in terms of a silver lining. However, yeah. before we do that, let's talk some trivia. So let's actually talk about this ritual. I have on the actual Cabin in the Woods wiki, I have pulled up this ritual so we can talk about it. Oh, there's a wow. lot to talk about. So let's talk about the main rules of this ritual. It's like this kind of pagan worship thing where basically they do have to kill these these stereotypical roles annually to satisfy the gods. Otherwise, they're going to take over the world. So the ritual is performed once a year. Uh, and, you know, you're allowed to do different scenarios across the world. That's why we see the Japan thing yep. and the Russia thing. But only one of them has to succeed. Uh, those that are being put in these scenarios have to be teenagers. Um but they have to be youthful, I should say, because each location has a different set of rules. Because yeah, you know, yeah. Japan nine years old is considered you know a youth, like a teenager right. kind of thing. But anyways, <laughs> they all have to die in a specific way. Um, if it, as long as one of the rituals around the world is completed, then you know the gods will be satisfied for a year. But if they fail, if all of them fail, then of course they come back and destroy the world. 
So here's the American ritual, the one we see for the most part of the okay. whole movie. Okay. Here's the rules. There must be at least five of the stereotypes. Okay. Uh, that so there it, can be more than five people. There must be at least five archetypes, is what this says. Okay. So it says while there may be more, the archetypes have to include a burnout. So we were saying, assuming that's what well, Marty. That's Marty. A slag. That's Jules. Right. The whore. A, a nerd, Holden. We could say. Okay. A jock, Thor, and a virgin, Dana. It okay. says, uh, the individuals that are chosen for these roles don't need to necessarily be consistent with these stereotypes. Um, you know, Because they can be manipulated. Yeah, their personalities can be altered okay. during the ritual, which is what the laboratories are doing. A uh, harbinger must be must blatantly warn them of their deaths, and that's where we get the gas station attendant, but they have to choose to ignore it. Mordecai. Mm-hmm. Uh, they must choose how they're going to die by selecting the items that they do in the cellar. Uh, here's the order. The whore has got to go first. Uh, and she must be the most, because she's got to be the most tainted. Uh, and an an optimal scenario, you know, she takes off her clothes, which, you know, Jules does. Then comes, uh, the, the, uh, the athlete has to come next. Then the scholar, then the fool, and then the virgin. Um, you know, with each, after each death happens, they have to fill up the monolith with the, uh, the, the, the lever that Hadley pulls. And once the virgin, the virgin has to be at least sexually tempted, then you can kill the scholar. Basically. Okay. And the virgin's death is actually optional. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but if she does die, she has to be the last to die. Okay. So that's the American rules. Let's talk about the Japanese rules. Cause there, there are a few. Oh, Jesus. They want younger kind of victims. They want ages okay. 9 to 14. Oh. Uh, they want it to be a homogenous group of young girls. Okay. This is a special emphasis, so that's why we have the school girls. There has to be... There can be no adult intervention at all, like like the Harbinger. Okay, so they don't have that. Yeah, and okay. this one's interesting. No nudity is needed. <laughs> so okay. that's... Thank that's God, God, right? Um they have one little note about a Swedish ritual, which is maybe what you're talking about with the Russia thing. It says it has to involve a natural disaster. Oh. So when we what we see um, in the oh, movie... Oh, Chernobyl. Well, what we see in the movie, it's a large volcano. Oh, okay. Which is actually footage from the, from Dante's Peak. <laughs> that, I never noticed, but yeah. That reminds me of a line earlier in the movie. Hmm. I think it's... Uh, um, it's right after the... Uh, after Marty's fake death. Yeah. After the tremor where Hadley's like, remember when we could just throw a girl in a volcano? Yeah. <laughs> remember when you could just do that? Yeah. <coughs> so that is the ritual, basically. So yeah. Damn, that is intricate. Yeah. Let's talk about it, though, because you remember when uh, Marty, quote unquote, dies, the, the room shakes, right? Yeah. The tremor shakes. You, you think that was like a sign that like, hey, you guys fucked up. He's not really dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's also interesting because they they kind of want this idea of a virgin, but the very first thing Dana we find out about Dana is that she slept with her yeah, teacher, exactly. <laughs> Which is great because again they don't fit into these normal roles, and I, that's kind of the whole purpose of the movie, which I think is fun. Uh, let's talk about some trivia. So again, this is actually one of the trivia notes. When Hadley does release the the blood for the monolith, the full monolith, the office has a tremor. Indicating that the gods are aware that they're wrong <laughs> in assuming that the Buckners have killed Marty. Which, yeah, I never really caught that until you pointed it out. I didn't either. I thought makes, it was just a random thing. That makes sense. The thermal coffee mug and bong that uh, Marty has was fully functional. Oh, my God. But it cost 5000 bucks to make. Worth every penny. Are yeah. you kidding me? Uh, Joss Whedon and Drew Goddard wrote the script in just three days. They, I believe that. They kind of locked themselves in a room in a motel and were like, we got to come up with something you know what can we do and they kind of like push themselves to do that all right the uh for the three, latin i mean for three days that's, damn. that's that's amazing yeah the latin that dana reads from the book says uh translates to pain outlives the flesh pain raises the flesh pain ignites the spirit okay okay uh i'm gonna come back to this one immediately after <laughs> the movie was was premiered and had a screening uh, in a Q and A with Drew Goddard, someone asked if there's going to be a sequel, and he just said, "Did you not see the ending to the movie?" So yeah, you're. I'm. There's no way to follow that movie. Yeah, up. no hopes for a Cabin in the Woods two. Don't hold out. Uh, and this we we talked about the reference point here. This comes back to that. You know, in the shot with the elevator cells, we can see uh, 
from the from the games Left 4 Dead, we can see both. We can see all of a, a tank, a witch, a boomer, and a hunter. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, huh. Their cameo was included to coincide with like this expansion pack that was going to come out for the game involving the cabin in the woods, where oh, you can go through cool. the facility of from the movie and play. But the tie-in was canceled. Um, oh, yeah, because MGM had some financial issues. Oh, oh, that was around that time, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, the big hand at the end of the movie was actually implied to be the Greek god uh, Kronos. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. We get an entire f- 44 minutes of this movie before we see the first person be killed. Yeah, but it's an amazing 44 minutes. Oh, yeah. And when you know it, the body count is 69. <laughs> what I right. feel like that was intentional. So let's talk about the most talked about thing in this movie. And that Kevin. Is Kevin. We need to talk about Kevin. We got to talk about Kevin. Possible future episode. Okay. <laughs> so... What do you think is Kevin? Who do you think is Kevin? It's Sin City. Elijah Woods Kevin. Sin City. All right. Yeah, that's kind of what the uh, IMDb trivia section is alluding to, too, is that it's some... it's a tribute to Kevin uh, from a lot, which is a lot to what's character from the yeah. the movie Sin City. Yeah, just a normal looking dude. Yeah. Uh, although Kevin is never seen in the movie in the tie-in book called "The Cabin in the Woods," the official visual companion, uh, co-writer Drew Goddard said that Kevin was meant to be, and this kind of ties in with the with the Sin City thing. He's, he's oh, like, yeah, it's completely. implied that Kevin was a sweet looking guy. Who seemed like he might work at Best Buy until he dismembers people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's that sounds str- like Kevin that's straight from out Sin of City. Sin City. All right, so that is Cabin in the Woods. I mean, we could always go back and talk about, like, you know, like the, the mythos of the movie and, like, yeah. you know, the whole thing. But let's let's talk about the ending. So, obviously, the entire world is, is gone. Gone. So, Completely. you got your work cut out for you. Do you have a silver lining for this movie? Oh, Lord. Um,. <laughs> I mean, the ancient gods aren't all cooped up in a little hole in the ground anymore. Maybe they do deserve, especially yeah, with this I mean, election. You know, am I right? They've been down there for a while. Let them roam free. Ain't, you know, ain't no party like an ancient god party because an ancient god party don't stop. Until the rituals don't come in. Yeah. Until the end of the world. So I have two. Uh, one's kind of a little fun. And okay. then one is more... Uh, fourth wall breaking, but you got a little uh, meta on this one. Yeah, I did. So Hadley got to finally see a merman. Thank God, dude. <laughs> right? You got you got what you Good wanted. For him. Be careful what you wish for. Right? Real up close and per- that's poetic justice. Mm-hmm. And I will say that you know, well, now that the Earth is over, this movie came out what 2012. Yeah. Oh, at least we won't get a Trump president presidency. So there is that. Anyways, let's talk about, talk about some pick-me-up movie alternatives. Yeah, way to gloss over that real for quick. For Cabin in the Woods. I don't um, want to get right, too political. Do we really need a pick-me-up alternative, though? That's your answer, right? You don't... That is my answer. Like, I don't have an alternative because this movie is... It's fun. It's it's a good time. Yeah. It's a ballsy ending, The too. world ends, mm-hmm. but, like, you know, it ends in, like, a fun way. Right. Well, maybe I can co- I can compensate for, you, okay. for your lack of alternative. I've you got two. Oh, I've got two. two. Okay. Uh... Someone brought, uh, someone brought their A game. Yes. Game. I'm going to go with another horror comedy movie that doesn't play by the rules okay. and is very self-aware. I'm going to go with the original. I'm going to go with Scream. Ooh, Wes Craven's Scream. Well played, sir. Mm-hmm. Not only that. Hello, woozy over here. <laughs> not only that. I'm going to give you another alternative. Okay. To Scream. <coughs> scary movie. Oh, both movies are a little meta. Okay, and definitely playing with this whole slasher kind of okay. genre kind of thing. I'll so, give you that. Well played, sir. Both great movies. Touche. So that is it. That wraps up uh, Cabin in the Woods. Uh, man, one I'm, of I'm the gonna best, go watch it again. One of the best horror movies, man. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in it's and listening so to this funny. episode. And thank you for tuning into the podcast itself. If you are on iTunes right now, please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave us a rating and some feedback. If you have a suggestion for a movie that's got a fucked up or downer ending and you want us to talk about it, go to our Facebook page and give us a give us a post. It's facebook.com slash silver linings playlist. And we're pretty open to any suggestions. Uh, what's up, Mally? All right, next week, the final episode of our Halloween mm-hmm, the five parter month. Do we do we give them a little tease of it? We should because I don't think anyone has guessed it so far. We've had a lot of people try and guess what movie we're gonna yeah, do. I've, on probably, I've had a, like it's been a recurring thing. I keep getting random text messages like, <laughs> "Is it this?" No, 
It, but You're, the, no, the, no one's got no one's even gotten part, close. The funny part is it's a glaringly obvious choice. For, it is. It, especially for how like niche our podcast is. Yeah. <laughs> like we're working in a very small corner of the market here. Yeah. So do you have you want to give them a hint for next week? What our, our final horror themed scary movie spectacular for the month of October on mm. Halloween Day. Halloween Day this comes out. Mm-hmm. Beware of the Irish. <laughs> Six more days to Halloween, man. Six more days. All right. So thank you again for listening, everybody. Uh, please, again, subscribe, rate, leave us suggestions. Uh, we obviously will be back in November with even more uh, uh, movies. Not necessarily horror themed movies, but we'll definitely probably t- throw in a few here and there. Because there are oh, a yeah. lot that still deserve I mean, it's hard not to. Yeah. So, as always, we'll leave you with this. Excelsior. Excelsior.